Welcome back to my series of videos on mathematics for economists. In this video I'm going to talk about scalar, linear, first order, ordinary differential equations. I'm going to derive the uh, solution formula that goes by the name of variation of constants and I'm going to apply the solution formula to two examples um, one economically motivated and one more statistically motivated but um, uh, yielding to uh, distributions that are often applied in economics. So the objects of interest here are, well, scalar, linear, first or ordinary differential equations. What do they look like? Uh, I've written two of them down. The first one has the derivative of x with respect to time on the left-hand side. This is what we denote by x dot. This is uh, dx to dt. On the right-hand side, we have an affine linear function in x, meaning that uh, we have a homogeneous term, um, a times x, and we have an inhomogeneous term, b. We allow both a and b to be functions of time. But then that, of course, also includes the case where they are constantly equal to two numbers, a and b. Uh, so we're going to have that simultaneously solved. If we drop the inhomogeneous term b, we are left with what is called the homogeneous equation, uh, which I'm just denoting by sub h here to make that clear. Uh, and we're going to solve the homogeneous equation along the way as then uh, a vehicle to further develop the solution of the inhomogeneous equation. So let's get started and uh, look at the homogeneous equation first. The solution is relatively easily seen to be the function e to the integral from t0 to t over a of tau d tau. I am introducing a new indicator variable tau here because I have already used t as the upper integration uh, boundary. If we feel so inclined we can adjust this solution to satisfy a certain initial condition uh, that the solution shall go through the point x, h, and t0 at uh, the initial time t0, but um, we don't have to. Any constant here will be a solution to the homogeneous equation. And uh, uh, since we're going to use this as a vehicle to solve the inhomogeneous equation, um, we can talk about initial conditions later in the context of the inhomogeneous equation. Why is this the solution? Um, if we look at the homogeneous equation and we divide it through by xh, then we get, of course, on the right-hand side only a of t. But x dot over x, that is the derivative with respect to time of the logarithm of the absolute value of x. And that's because the, in, the outer derivative uh, log x is 1 over x and then the inner derivative is x dot and so this uh, derivative is uh, x dot over x. From that we see right away then that the logarithm of the absolute value, now I'm integrating both sides, is um, a constant plus the integral from t naught to t over a of tau d tau, which I get from integrating this term here. Now I plug both sides of the equation as arguments into the exponential function and I get that the absolute value of x is e to the power of c times e to the integral from t naught to t over a of tau d tau. Then if I drop the absolute value bars, I get plus minus e to the c, e to the integral t naught to t a of tau d tau, and I can understand this as some constant c that I adjust to satisfy a possible initial condition, or I just leave it as a constant, uh, since this is the, the general solution to the homogeneous equation. Let's consider 
That's the inhomogeneous equation now. And let's write it in the form x dot minus a of t, x of t is b of t. Just brought the homogeneous term over to the left hand side. Now we have an idea. It is the idea of the integrating factor. It's a function mu of t at this point that we uh, take and we multiply the entire equation through with mu of t. Mu x dot minus a mu x equals mu b. Why do we do this? Because we have somehow the idea, wait a minute, we have on the left hand side here an x dot and an x. Um, can we in some sense understand this left hand side as the result of an application of the product rule? Can therefore this expression here be somehow a result of the product rule. So this would be the this would be the derivative with respect to time of the product mu of t times x of t. What would this buy us? This would buy us that uh, this would be equal to the right hand side mu of t b of t and then we could integrate both sides of this equation to get mu times x on the left hand side and the integral over mu times b on the right hand side and then we could divide through by mu of t and isolate in this way x of t on the left hand side and we would get hopefully a tractable expression on the right hand side that then is the solution for x of t. That's the basic idea behind the integrating factor. Um, so if this is the case then uh, what do we need to satisfy or if this, is, if this is doable then what do we need to satisfy? We can see it essentially right here. We need to satisfy that uh, we have we have mu x dot and mu x dot here and we have mu dot x and minus a mu here and it also comes with x so what we need to satisfy is mu dot from here is equal to minus a of t mu of t from here. Yeah, And we recognize this to be our homogeneous equation only with a negative sign. So we know what the solution to, to mu is. So uh, mu of t is given by e to the negative integral from t0 to t over a of tau d tau. And this means that, uh, yes, we can actually understand the left-hand side uh, when we multiply through by the integrating factor. We can understand the left-hand side as the result of an application of the product rule if we choose the integrating factor exactly in this fashion. Um, and then uh, we, can, uh, we can integrate this equation here to give us 
mu of t x of t is the integral from t naught to t over mu of tau b of tau d tau plus a constant c. I'm always writing the same simple c. Of course, it's not always the same constant, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so we have mu of t times x of t. We want to have x of t, so all we need to do is isolate it. So x of t is mu of t reciprocal times the constant plus mu of t reciprocal times the integral from t naught to t over mu of tau b of tau d tau. And here we have our variation of constants formula. We can now plug in for mu of t, of course, because we have solved it, so let's do that. So we get, plug in the homogeneous solution. I mean, if you use a language, it's the solution to the homogeneous equation, but, uh, but you know what I mean. Um, so we write x of t is now mu reciprocal. This is, uh, uh, remember, mu was um, had had the negative integral in the in the arg in the exponential function. So now we have the positive integral, t naught to t a of tau d tau times the constant. Plus now again uh, e to the positive integral t naught to t a of tau d tau times the big integral t naught to t and now mu of tau what is mu of tau uh, that is e to the minus the integral from t naught to tau over now i use tau i need a, no, a new indicator variable so let's uh, let's agree on a of s ds and then there's still standing b of tau d tau yeah can clean this up a bit. Not much to do here in the um, in the beginning, but we can uh, we can now talk about an initial condition. So let's say that we have the initial condition that uh, x of t naught shall equal a given x naught. Then, if we evaluate the solution in t naught, um, all the integrals here take the value 0 because they go from t0 to t0, meaning that all the exponential functions um, are going to uh, be equal to 1, but this big integral here is actually setting the whole second term equal to 0. And so we're just left with the first term, and the first term uh, is uh, just c, so we recognize that all we need to do is replace c by x0, and we satisfy the initial condition times e to the integral from t naught to t over a of tau t tau plus now we have this product of these two exponential functions here and we can use the um, because if we apply the the fact that e to the power of a uh, times e to the power of b is e to the power of a plus b so we get the sum of these two integrals if we put if we take the uh, if we take this factor here and take it into the integration. Um, and the sum of the two integrals, they, they only differ by their integration boundaries. So we can use the interval additivity of integration and we can write this as the integral from t naught to t uh, over e to the integral from tau to t over a of s ds and then there's still standing b of tau d tau yeah this is the variation of constants formula um, Of course, if uh, uh, if a and b are uh, not functions but just constants, then uh, uh, these expressions um, 
simplify accordingly. So uh, for uh, uh, for this integral here, we would just get a times t minus t naught if a is constant, right? Uh, and for this one, we would just get a times uh, t minus tau if uh, if a is constant. And of course, if b is constant, the whole expression also substantially uh, uh, simplifies because then we can easily evaluate the integral. Um, but uh, this is the general solution for general formula. Uh, let me let me erase these again. For general form uh, general uh, functions a of t and b of t. And uh, so let's uh, apply this to to two examples. Let's say we consider an economy that produces output only using capital. And it has the following production function. Y of t, that's the output, is a linear production function in capital K of T and then we have a, a coefficient or a rather a coefficient function T to the to the Delta that in some sense captures technological progress and this is our linear production function only dependent on capital linear production function. So uh, technological progress now depending on the on the size of the of the delta coefficient of uh, uh, delta is less than one then uh, uh, the uh, the derivative uh, decreases with with time and so uh, uh, if, if delta is larger than one then it's going to uh, grow faster with respect to time so we can capture a different kind of um, from a very macro perspective, different kind of uh, uh, progress paths with a function like this. So let's say that the that the capital accumulation we are in continuous time. So at each point in time is given by change in capital at each point in time, that's the derivative of capital with respect to time, is in a fairly Keynesian fashion given by a, uh, by a saving uh, coefficient s times the output. Yeah. So s is some, some savings coefficient between 0 and 1. Uh, since y is uh, specified up there, we can just plug this in. So we get s times alpha times t to the delta plus s times beta times capital times t to the delta. Well, let me write this the other way around because I want to have, of course, our general form of the time varying coefficients. So let me write it this way and then we can identify this here as our, as our inhomogeneous term b of t and we can identify this here as our homogeneous, uh, as a coefficient of the homogeneous term a times k. So this would be a of t. So, and so we can apply the variation of constants formula to solve this differential equation for the capital stock. So first start with the, with the homogeneous equation. Yeah, um, the homogeneous equation would just be uh, k dot is a of t times k of t. And so um, let's denote it with a sub h as before. Uh, this is solved by um, e to the um, e to the 
integral over a of t. And so a of t here is given by s beta t to the delta. So we get the integral from t naught to t over s beta. Now I've used t for the upper integration boundary, so I'm introducing tau to the delta d tau. I can evaluate this integral. Uh, S and beta are just coefficients. I can take them out, so I'm just integrating over over tau to the to the delta, and that's of course uh, tau to the delta plus one divided by delta plus one. So I can write this as e to the S beta over delta plus one times, and now uh, tau to the delta plus one evaluated uh, um, in uh, in t and evaluated in t naught. So this gives me t to the delta plus 1 minus t naught to the delta plus 1. That's the solution to the homogeneous equation. Now let's go and use this to solve the inhomogeneous equation. The inhomogeneous equation then is solved by k of t is some initial condition we want to satisfy an initial capital stock k naught times the solution of the homogeneous equation plus the solution of the homogeneous equation times the integral from t naught to t over kh reciprocal of t, uh, of tau, excuse me, e of tau, d tau. Okay, let's plug all those, uh, all those objects in. So we have k naught times the solution of the homogeneous equation, which we found to be e to the s beta over delta plus 1 times t to the delta plus 1 minus t naught to the delta plus 1 plus solution to the homogeneous equation again e to the s beta over delta plus 1 to the t to the delta plus 1 minus t naught to the delta plus 1 times the integral from t naught to t over e to the minus s beta over delta plus 1 to times the times t to the delta plus 1 minus t naught to the delta plus 1. Um, b of tau was s alpha tau to the delta d tau. Okay. It's not a whole lot I can do here with the first term, so I'm just copying it. Um, now I'm taking again the uh, I'm 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 consolidating these two exponential functions here, and of course the uh, the coefficients s time alpha they have nothing to do with the uh, integration indicator tau, so I can just take that out s times alpha as a coefficient in front of the integral, which goes from t naught to t as before. And then, um, of course, the, the t naught part here is neutralizing because I have, a, I have a minus here and a minus minus, which is a plus there. And so um, I'm left with e to the s beta over delta plus 1 times t to the delta plus 1 minus tau to the delta plus 1. And then I have a tau to the delta standing here, d tau. So uh, of course, I want, to want, I want to work a bit more on this integral and see if I can get a, a more close form expression for this. And if I think about this for a while, uh, I hopefully have the idea to introduce a substitution um, the substitution w is tau to the delta plus 1. If w is tau to the delta plus 1, then tau 
is w to the 1 over delta plus 1 and then dw is delta plus 1 um, tau to the delta d tau because if I take the derivative of w with respect to tau I get delta plus 1 times tau to the delta and so I can write the differential in w like this but what I, what I want to substitute of course is the um, differential in tau so I'm um, isolating the differential in tau of course then I just get the reciprocals here 1 over delta plus 1 tau to the minus delta dw but now I want to express uh, tau to the minus delta in w terms so if tau is is 1 if tau is w to the 1 over delta plus 1 and then I take it to the power of minus delta I get w to the minus delta over delta plus 1 dw and then I know what to replace the d tau with um, okay so then what does our let me let me just copy the the, the integral we're interested in here just uh, not doing anything just from above so that we know what we're working with t to the delta plus 1 minus tau to the delta plus 1 tau to the delta d tau is now equal to s times alpha remains the same of course oh we need to think about the integration boundaries of course so um, if um, if uh, t is equal to t naught then we can introduce uh, well let me not call it w naught uh, let me call it let me call it u naught say this is the value that w takes in uh, in t0 this would be t0 to the delta plus 1 and then let's call it uh, u is t to the delta plus 1 that I don't need to uh, introduce yet another indicator variable so we have um, uh, we have integration boundaries from u naught to u and now e to the s beta over delta plus 1 of course remains the same but now t to the uh, to the delta plus 1 that's u that's the upper integration boundary and tau to the delta plus 1 that's now my w um, then I have t to the t to the delta um, t to the delta is as we saw uh, w to the delta over delta plus 1 and then I have d tau and d tau we now saw is 1 over delta plus 1 w to the minus delta over delta plus 1 dw now we see of course a lot of things cancel here and can be taken out of the integration so we get s alpha over delta plus 1 um, integral from u naught to u over e to the s beta over delta plus 1 uh, u minus w and then there's just dw left over and that's of course an integral we can easily evaluate so this is uh, since the indicator variable there comes with a, comes with a minus in the exponential function this is minus s alpha over delta plus 1 uh, times and now we get the reciprocal of this fraction and the expon uh, exponential function as the as the inner derivative minus 1 so that's delta plus 1 since the minus we offer, have already written there uh, divided by s beta so I see there's a lot cancelling again and then I get the exponential function itself e to the s beta over delta plus 1 times u minus w and now I evaluate in 
w equal to u0 and, and w equal to u. And so I get um, get alpha over beta e to the s beta over delta plus 1 times u minus u naught and then in u naught it's only then in u it's um, it's uh, u minus u power e to the power 0 that's just 1 yeah so this is my uh, value for the integral I still have it in, in, in u and u naught here, but I can easily um, uh, plug in these uh, expressions in t and t naught instead. But that's just the integral, of course. The solution also still has the uh, the first term here. So uh, let's let's collect the solution. That will be k of t is k naught e to the e to the s beta over delta plus 1, t to the delta plus 1 minus t naught to the delta plus 1, plus, now comes my, my integral, which I have not evaluated, alpha over beta times e to the s beta over delta plus 1, and now I'm substituting for u and u naught, so this is t to the delta plus 1 minus t naught to the delta plus 1. And uh, now I can of course factor the exponential function out, so I get e to the s beta over delta plus 1 times t to the delta plus 1 minus t naught to the delta plus 1 times k naught plus alpha over beta. And that's my relatively simple function in T that describes the dynamics of the capital stock. Now, that was the first example uh, where we apply the variation of constants formula to, uh, um, to get the, uh, the evolution of the capital stock in such an economy that produces only with capital. Let's consider a second example. Um, let's consider a probability density function f of t of a random variable capital T that only takes positive values. And our idea is to somehow model the lifetime of something with this random variable. Then we can be interested in um, the cumulative distribution function because the cumulative distribution function tells us uh, what's the probability that the lifetime is less than a given a point in time t, and this is the integral from 0 to t over the density, the probability density. This would be the cumulative distribution function. We can also consider the what is called reliability function. The reliability function is the reciprocal of the cumulative distribution function. Uh, so this would be the probability that the lifetime is longer than the given point in time t. So this is something like the survival probability beyond t. Now, for example, we could think about a, about a large and complex power grid. Uh, what's the probability of a power failure uh, before 
uh, before t, after t, um, we can define the hazard rate, the hazard rate, which is the relation of the probability that the lifetime reaches t but ends in the next second, in the next instant in time, let's call it. Uh, it's between t and t plus dt, given that uh, it has made it to point t. This would be then the density in t divided by the reliability function. So uh, to be precise, this, this um, uh, probability between t and t plus dt, we are, uh, what we mean by that is the limit as uh, epsilon goes to zero of the probability that uh, the random variable realizes between t and t plus epsilon, uh, and then we uh, let epsilon go to zero. So this would be, in the, in the power grid example, this would be the probability that the failure occurs uh, right after point t. From the expression of the reliability function as 1 minus the cumulative distribution function, uh, we get that the derivative of the reliability function with respect to, to t, this is minus the probability density function. And from the definition of the hazard rate here, um, this is equal to minus h of t r of t. And so uh, after a while we recognize that this is actually a situation in which we can apply our um, our solution theory for linear ODE. Here we have a homogeneous equation but with time varying coefficient function. Do we have a an initial condition? Well, what about r and zero? This would be one minus f and zero. f is an integral from zero to t and so in uh, zero, this has the value zero, so the initial condition is that the reliability function in zero must equal one. Well, and then we uh, can write down immediately the solution to the reliability function in terms of the hazard rate as e to the negative integral over the hazard, uh, from, one, from zero to t over the hazard rate h of tau d tau. And now we can write ft, the probability density function in terms of the hazard rate. So f of t is minus r dot of t is h of t r of t. And now we found r of t, so this is h of t e to the minus integral from 0 to t over h of tau d tau. And now we can motivate, maybe, different functional forms for the hazard rate from considering the object that is uh, um, that is behind our concept of t capturing the lifetime. So if we, for example, um, can reasonably assume a constant hazard rate, let's call it lambda, it's a positive number, we get that f of t is lambda, the constant hazard rate, e to the 
minus the integral from 0 to t over lambda constant times uh, uh, with respect to d tau, that's just minus lambda times t, or minus lambda times t minus 0. And this we recognize to be the probability density function of the exponential distribution. So we see here that the exponential distribution has a motivation from assuming a constant hazard rate and then solving the differential equation uh, that we get from the definition of the hazard rate. If we can reasonably assume a different functional form for the hazard rate, and I'm not going to go through the motivation here, I'm just going to write it down. So if we can, for some reason, assume that the hazard rate has this form here. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a polynomial in T uh, with positive uh, lambda and k. Then our probability density function takes the form h of t, that would be k over lambda to the k now, t to the k minus 1, e to the negative integral from 0 to t over h of tau, that would be k over lambda to the k, uh, tau to the k minus 1, d tau. This integral we can certainly evaluate. Uh, this is 1 over lambda to the k tau to the k evaluated from 0 to t. So this is t to the k divided by lambda to the k. And thus f of t is k over lambda to the k t to the k minus 1 e to the minus t to the k over lambda to the k or if you're so inclined k over lambda times t over lambda to the k minus 1, e to the minus t over lambda to the power of k. And this we recognize as the probability density function of the Weibull distribution. Yeah. So Weibull and exponential distributions come from the same stock, which is um, the differential equation and the hazard rate, only that we assume different functional forms for the hazard rate for these two distributions. Yeah? So uh, these were two examples and the variation of constants formula. Um, thanks so much for watching.